my channel, my name is Anna and in this video I'll be showing you three weeknight meals that I'm cooking. Starting with mac and cheese. Now I know that this is a traditional American dish, so I'm very curious what my American viewers are going to say about it. I bet it's one of those things where every family has its own recipe, so I'm really curious if you will agree with the approach I'm taking or with the recipe I'm making or if you do it completely differently, just let me know down in the comments. Now, with this recipe, my partner and I, we agreed that the best thing about it is the breadcrumbs on top of the mac and cheese. Now, to make those, I'm starting with melting some butter and then adding some garlic into it later. But the most important thing is the breadcrumbs themselves. So how I've made these, I've already made them beforehand. I, whenever I make my sourdough bread and there are any leftovers, I put them in the freezer and when there is a bunch of them kind of ready or taking up too much space in the freezer, I take them out and cut them into pieces. I sometimes roast them, sometimes I don't, and I just blend them up into this mixture, mixture that you see right here. So into that mixture, I'm adding the butter and the garlic and also a little bit of Parmesan cheese. And I'll just mix it up and I'll leave it by the side waiting for everything else to come together first. As for the cheese part, the recipe says to start with making roux. And since I'm making the roux in the beginning, I thought that I would try to make a lot of it. So just uh, melting the butter and adding the flour into it, I didn't really measure, maybe I should have, I think I ended up with a little bit too much butter, so it should be one to one. The same amount of butter for the same amount of flour. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I've recently learned that you can freeze the roux and then you can just pop it out of the fridge and use it whenever you need it. So I'm making a whole bunch, I'm setting most of it aside in a bowl and then leaving just a bit in the pot. Now the next step is to add some milk. You want to do that slowly, just add a little bit into the roux and use a whisk. This one that I'm using is really great for this to whisk it all together until it becomes completely smooth. And only then do you add a little bit more milk. And then again, you whisk it up, make it smooth and so on until you pour in all of the milk. This way, you don't end up with all these like clumps of you know flour and butter in your milk. So I'm letting that milk come to a boil, and in the meantime, I'm getting my cheddar cheese ready, so shredding that. I'm also boiling the pasta. Now for the pasta, I'm not using your typical macaroni. I don't have those. Um, so just a different kind of pasta and you want to boil that just a little bit less than you normally would because this will go into the oven later so you don't want to overcook them. I'm adding both the cheddar and Parmesan cheese into the milk and I guess this might be the point where a lot of you might say that you do something else like some other cheeses. The cookbook said to have these two like have a like a, I don't know, a standard cheese or like a base cheese with either the cheddar or maybe something like um, Gruyere or Gouda and then have like a tasty, more, I don't know, I guess maybe stronger flavored cheese like the Parmesan or Pecorino or Feta or just something a little bit stronger adding a little bit of salt, then setting that aside and doing a little bit of cleanup because as my mom has taught me, the golden rule in the kitchen is that one hand is cooking and the other one is cleaning. <laughs> Meaning you just want to clean as you go so that you, well, first of all, have a clear counter space where you can cook and second, that you don't end up with a huge load of dishes at the end. 
So I'm now assembling it, putting in the pasta in my baking dish. I'm adding some meat as well, just to make this a little bit higher in protein, a little bit more filling. And then pouring over the cheese and milk mixture. And finally, the breadcrumbs on top, covering the entire thing. The more the better in this case. I am putting it in the oven at 175 degrees Celsius until it is nice and brown, which should take about 20-ish minutes. And this is what the result looks like. It's making me just a little bit hungry right now. I hope it looks delicious to you as well. For that roux, I've actually put this into the fridge for maybe just a little bit too long. So when I took it out, I had to work it again to like shape it into um, this sort of a roll shape, I guess you could say. I then wrap it in plastic foil and I put it in the freezer for later use. This is another weeknight and I'm making asparagus soup. Now my goal this year and hopefully in the future as well is to try and use more seasonal ingredients. And asparagus is in season here in the Czech Republic right now. So I'm trying to use it just a couple times at least while it lasts. So I'm first just chopping it up and then sauteing it in a little bit of butter together with some garlic as well. And you saw me pull that garlic out of the freezer as well. So whenever I get fresh garlic, maybe like one or two heads, I will clean them up, but not cut them, just take the skins off and I'll put them in the freezer as well. And this just keeps them forever. Next thing I'm getting ready is my chicken broth. And then once the asparagus is sauteed, I will pick just a couple of the nicer heads and I'll save those for later as a garnish. So this is definitely an optional step, but it does add a little nice cr crunch to the soup. I'm adding Parmesan cheese and the broth and a little bit, a little bit of cream as well. Mixing all of it up, bringing it to a boil and cooking it for, I would say about 10, 15 minutes. Once it's done cooking, I will blend everything up. And here comes that frozen roux. Now, as you can see, the plastic wrap just uh, didn't work. It stuck to it completely. I later had to take it off and I just put it in a glass jar. But it did work in terms of thickening up the soup. I'm also adding some more chicken meat that I've already cooked. So this was a whole chicken that I cooked and then took the meat off the bones. And you saw me add part of that into the mac and cheese. Now another part goes into this soup and when I was getting ready to serve it. I also made some butter toasts just to go alongside the soup to make it like a full evening meal, let's say. Before I start the next meal, I like to clean up the surface. I always try to do that just before I'm starting a new meal, just to have like a clean slate. And I was hoping that I could actually watch some TV while prepping this one, but the baby woke up like 10 minutes into me watching it. So there was no TV show on. Um, but what I'm making here is some pizza with maybe more
more of an unusual topping. Um, you will see that later. I'm starting with cutting up some veggies here. So I have red onions, which I'm going to caramelize in some balsamic vinegar. Um, what I bought was actually something a little bit different. It was like a balsamic glaze or something. So it was a bit thicker, which you will see here, but it did the job anyways, so it was fine. And then I'm cutting up more onion, this time just a regular one, a carrot, and some um, celery, just because I have that on hand. Trying to cut those all into very small pieces. I think it's nicer for this kind of meal to just have very small bites of the veggies. I am then sauteing all of them, starting with the carrots that are the hardest, then adding the celery and the onion. And once they get a little bit more golden, I add some minced meat. So that's the unusual ingredient, plus I guess the veggies as well. You don't typically find those on a pizza. I brown all of the meat and then add some tomato sauce. The pizza dough came out of the fridge. I got the cheddar ready as well, all shredded. And then I was so happy that I had the opportunity to use a little bit of um, thyme that I am growing in, um, in a pot on my balcony. Now, I don't know if you're anything like me, but I just could never keep anything alive. So I'm just so happy that this year it looks like it's working and I've had the thyme and rosemary as well for a very long time, like a couple months already and I'm very proud of that. And then it's assembly time, so on the dough I'm just putting the meat and vegetable mixture, I'm sprinkling a little bit of oregano on top and then the thyme. I'm using that as well and the cheddar cheese which maybe I did a little bit too much like the pizza was just a little bit more greasy than it needed to be I'm then adding all the red onions those are just uh, so delicious putting it in the oven at about 200 degrees Celsius for uh, 20 ish minutes and then to serve it, I'm using some sour cream as well to go with it. And that made for another delicious weeknight meal. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching me cook all those meals and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.